Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is David Hanlon, aka The Laptop Legend, and in this video, I wanna go over some of the plays from the last couple of weeks that have allowed me to make over $56,000 on the month so far, which is not an incredible month for me, but it's nice to bounce back after my big loss. So I wanna talk about some of the takeaways, uh, you know, just some from some of the reflecting that I've been doing. I wanna talk about the plays from this week, and then I also wanna talk about a couple stocks that I'm eyeing for the next week, because honestly, uh, in my last video stuff, pretty much panned out exactly as I was hoping for. And I was able to make some decent money off of those setups that I mentioned, and hopefully some of you guys had those stocks on your radar and were able to capitalize on them as well. So. Let's just dive right into it. So here we have HUDI, and uh, this is one that it's again been hanging around forever. It had been after being pumped up. Let me give it uh, two years. That's one year. Let's go two years. So you can see, you know, it had an incredible number of green days in a row. Got pumped up. Your typical Chinese, uh, you know, walk up. Had the day where it didn't die. Hung around for over a year. Finally, they decided to bring it back to life. Spike it up to you know, almost $200 a share, and that was where my last video left off. And I said I was watching for this one, and uh, I would be looking to short this thing, not on the front side, not while it's going crazy, but once it has that day where it goes, and it's down from 190 down to 50 bucks or 40 bucks, it could easily keep fading that same day and go much, much lower. And that is exactly what we got. Now, unfortunately, it did not pan out exactly like I expected because they did an offering. And that offer came out in pre-market, and I'll go show you the intraday chart. We'll go, let's go one month, one minute, just so you can see what happened. Um, and it was a little difficult for me to chase, because this thing was hanging around up here in, you know, 190 range. Pre-market happens, and then, boom, it drops from 120 down to 50. So it drops, drops $70 a share on pretty much no volume whatsoever. Uh, and in my head, I was thinking, all right, you know, there's an offering, that's great, but this could be a trap. And I don't wanna get caught in low liquidity pre-market as this thing is ripping back and they trap shorts again and send it to 500, you know? I have PTSD from HKD. If you guys don't know what that stock is, just look up the chart. Um, so you can see, crazy dump, tried to bounce, couldn't bounce, and then even from there, you get a fade from 47 straight down to 27. That's 20 bucks a share, man. I mean, you take 500 shares, that's still 10 grand in like five or 10 minutes there. So that was a nice short, but I honestly, I didn't get that either. Uh, I didn't hit this either. But what I did do is once it stayed weak, uh, I started sorting during normal market hours. And yes, you might be thinking, David, you're crazy. This stock literally closed the day at almost 190 bucks previously. And now you're shorting at market open when it's at, you know, whatever. 20 something dollars. You're thinking, David, you're crazy. But if I zoom in, you can see it actually had the perfect downtrend that I was expecting all day long. Because once you have that type of action, they pretty much just, they just keep selling shares. They turn on their algorithms to, to auto liquidate and you get a really clean downtrend. And so, you know, I ended up making some decent money this day because you think about it, you short here in the 25, 26, 24, 23 area. And by the end of the day, it can't make any higher highs and it keeps making lower lows every time. It keeps making these descending triangles where you get these lower lows and a flat base. Once it cracks, boom, you get a washout. And then you do kind of the same thing where it bounces, lower highs, flat base. Once it cracks this, boom, you get a nice washout. And it does that over and over and over. So by the end of the day, you know, you shorted 25, 26, 24, it's down to 15. So you made another almost $9 a share headache free completely easy unwind and this is the chart that i love to see this is so easy to make money on on the short side because you can just risk previous highs or you can keep adding to your winner and have bigger and bigger size the lower it goes you know adding every pop that it has that fails when they start to top out here at these levels you can put some back on and, and add 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 so these are really nice plays guys and uh you can see it did that for the next freaking like three days in a row um, so we got a nice pop in pre-market. I'm like, great. That was the bounce that it needed to have to, to, to blow off. So now I can fade it again. And uh, what do you know? The very next day, had a perfect downtrend again. So I did the same exact thing. And what do you know? It bounced a little bit in after hours. And the next day, the same exact thing. A perfect downtrend, no higher highs, always lower lows, lower highs. And it's just really easy. And then you get another one. <laughs> Big bounce in after hours. 
All right, that's the balance you need to have from seven to, you know, freaking almost 12. And then the next day, you know, you get a really nice fade. Now it did have a bounce here uh, towards the end of the day, but still, I mean, four days in a row where I made money doing the same thing on this stock every single day. So uh, absolutely love that. And I look for that on pretty much all of these plays when they don't give up all their gains. So, you know, if you have a, a super overextended play that gets liquidated, I look to fade him for, for a lot of days in a row. So great play there. MMTLP, I was watching this one for a breakout over the 750 level. This is the one minute chart. Um, that I was talking about. I'll go to the one year so you can see. One year, one day. Uh, this is what it was looking like before, something like this. And it broke down, but saved itself, did a V shaped recovery. And then after this day here, you know, it was pretty obvious it wanted to break out. Unfortunately, I wasn't paying too much attention. I should have bought on this dip when it held here at the previous day's uh, lows, previous day's highs, but I didn't. I ended up chasing and I got filled. Uh, I think like 9.5 thousand shares from an $8 average. Um, and now I'll go into the one minute just so you can see why I decided to hold those. Uh, so it goes up here. That's that day. I mean, it holds off the open and then just completely rips, but it goes perfectly sideways, guys. And, uh, you know, this is amazing price action that I love to see on OTCs because it makes it so easy to hold your size. Sometimes they do fake outs and come back in, but if they don't do fake outs, like you can buy in this consolidation, risking the breakdown of the consolidation. And most of the time, if it's the first day of the breakout, like you get an incredible extension in the morning on the next day. So this is the next day and you can see it went pretty much straight from 830s up to 950, 960s. And so that was an incredible move, man. And I, I made some decent money on this breakout. Now I locked some in here, literally right before it dumped. I called that out in the uh, in the Discord. It was pretty crazy, man. It, it dumped almost a dollar a share in like two minutes. So when they want to rug pull this thing, they can easily do it. Just pull all the bids. Uh, but you can see they saved it immediately, like sketchy pumps typically do. And uh, you know, it closed strong. Unfortunately, you know, it barely made highs. I wanted to break out over 10 and then it just kind of faded off. Uh, so at this point, it's starting to curl up a little bit. I'm hoping this thing can go actually parabolic and go to like 15 bucks or 20 bucks um, because it makes it a little difficult on the short side if you're trying to catch this thing and it just starts slowly fading off because it's so easy for it to come back. This volume you can see is terrible. This is not how I want to see a stock top. What I want to see for topping action is something parabolic like this, where you get, you know, the days accelerating, you get a massive day, massive volume, and the blow off move, and then a, a massive collapse. That is where it's easy to make money, you know, on the long side and the short side. So this like grindy gross price action up here, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, the only thing is like, if it's going sideways on low volume near the highs, it potentially can go higher. Like that's typically what stocks try to tell you when they do that. So I'm hoping this thing, again, can go to 15, 20 bucks. That'd be epic. I would look to long this again if it can break out. Uh, I did take a long yesterday, but I sold it before the end of the day. So I'm gonna be watching this and hopefully catch along on that. MMAT did want to show this. Uh, you know, this is the sympathy play because it's like, it's the same company. Metamaterials, and this is Metamaterials. So they run pretty much together. Um, and this has, I would say, better liquidity. Um, and this was a nice rip, man. So that same breakout day, you know, there's, there's some nice profit to be made if you can capitalize on these moves. So I'll definitely be, definitely be watching these moving forward. Um, JWEL, this was another great one. Uh, I nailed this one on this day. I talked about in one of my previous videos, I hit it on this day, uh, with smaller size and then it chopped around here for a little bit and then it had another, a third liquidation day. Um, and this one was, honestly, I, I did not capitalize on this as well as I should have. Some of my friends did a lot better. Um, I think I only made, I don't even know, like five or six grand on this one, which is sad because it was such a great opportunity. Um, and you can see again, you know, more fading after that. But it, at this point, it's so cheap. There's not too much more downside. But just to show you the chart, you know, they, they do a ton of wash volume up here. They, they dump the shares that they need to and then they just start liquidating, man. You see this enormous volume come in. Uh, and this is something you got to be watching because look at this unwind, man. I mean, just absolutely insane. When it breaks the $1 area, crazy. Uh, I covered, I don't even know, like 92 cents or something. 
and I chased a few down at I think 64 and I covered it like 52 or something I mean just crazy you know, if I had just held sides from up here that would have been you know I could have had a 40 50k win on that but you know it is what it is I'm still playing it conservatively after I lag SGLY this was another one where you can see crazy volume comes in and uh, this one they kind of saved here so I got out of it this day and then the next day just went straight down it went absolutely straight down um, so I, I made some on this but didn't make too much because it was hard to get size uh, so yeah I just wanted to review a couple of of those liquidation plays because it feels like we've been having pretty much one a day man LGHL uh, that went for another round so <laughs> they like to walk this up and then dump it you can see the amount of times they've done it is is pretty freaking unreal, man. Um, so yeah, that's just another example. TC, I'm watching this one. You know, I think it could happen at some point, but uh, it got a little crowded on the short side. And when there's no volume, it's just shorts chasing over other shorts, and uh, it's it's not something that I really want to be involved in. Um, you can see it just fell off a cliff on on pretty much no volume at all. And I gave the warning, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I can't short this here because there's no volume. You know, if it, it, if it can fail and then selling starts and it stays heavy and volume increases, I'm happy to short down here. But uh, I'm not going to chase this thing with this type of volume. And, you know, after that, you get a, a bounce from five to seven. And by the end of the day, it closes at like seven bucks. So I don't know if they repump this more or, you know, they bring in more volume and kill it and send it down. I know eventually this thing is probably going back to two bucks, but I don't want to be early, man. So there's that. Um, I'm also looking at GTII. I just want to talk about this uh, pretty quickly. If you go and look at the one hour chart, I guess let's do, can I do three months? I cannot. Two months? There we go. Two months, one hour, just so you can see what I look for on these uh, once this actually loads, which would be nice if it could be soon. There we go. Okay, well, that makes it kind of difficult. I don't know why I can only do that much. Uh, basically, the point of this is it's kind of wedging here, and it got really tight. You can't see because of stocks to trade. It's, it's, it's being really annoying. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't show you. But moral of the story is if you look at this on Thinkorswim, you can see, you know, the price action. It got, like, it got really tight here. So I think it picks a direction at some point soon it would be sick if it could break out uh and set up for you know new highs but i think most likely scenario is it just breaks down and dies so i'll probably be looking to start a swing short uh, once it starts breaking down here uh i think if it collapses and actually you know can get under the 320 and stay under it'll go under three and probably go to mid or low twos within a very short amount of time maybe mid to low ones i'm not sure uh, you know, if it breaks this $2 support area, it's it's going to be game over. So I'm going to be looking at that one for this upcoming week. Uh, one other one I wanted to mention is VIHDD. And this is one that, because of my mistakes in the past, uh, you know, I was able to, to capitalize on this without taking massive losses on the front side. So this is, you know, a classic OTC pump and dump chart. Um, what you don't see is that the reason it's VIHDD, it's like a weird ticker, is because it was VIHD, but they decided to do a two to one forward split. So most OTC stocks do reverse splits, but this actually did a forward split to make its stock less expensive. So when it started off, uh, they were selling shares, you know, was, this was twice as expensive. So this was $10 on the second day. And this is when I first saw it. And I don't like, you know, buying OTC pumps at $10 because that usually, usually does not end well for me. Um, so luckily, I didn't short it because of my mistakes in the past on GESI. Uh, and this thing, you can see, I mean, it went from that $10 range where it was, now it's $5 because it split, and it went as high as $19, man. Uh, and it went on for a decent amount of time, like over two weeks on the first wave of this pump. Um, and I was able to actually capitalize on this and made like made like 10 or 11 grand on this day uh, with very, very low risk just because it respected uh, the levels well, and you know, on that first selling day, typically it has a massive unwind. So I was able to short it like 17 bucks and cover, uh, you know, eight to 11 range. So that was super nice play. Um, I want to go show you my profit. So again, here's where I am on the month so far. But if you go look overall at 2022, um, you know, I'm 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 still up 
six realized on the year, which is great. But what I want to talk about is the fact that I was trading really sloppy, guys. Uh, you know, I think there were a lot of opportunities for me, and that allowed me to get away with really sloppy trading. If I go show you June, that's my best month on the year, uh, it'll probably look a lot different than what you're expecting. It was almost an entirely red month, and I got bailed out with an absolutely massive profit day on the 28th. Um, and if I actually go into detail about what this is, pretty much all of these, all of these red days here, these massive red days are just me fighting an OTC pump on the short side. I just, I was just really, really dumb and incredibly stubborn. And not only did I lose, I mean, just a crazy amount of money here, but I also lost $43,000 in borrow fees from holding this stuff overnight. So over six figures, over $100,000 I lost on this one stock uh, in this month because I was just being really stubborn on it. And luckily, again, from that, I learned the lesson not to be early because you know I probably would have shorted this thing like on this day here and gotten bought in up here. Uh, but it's just, I just want to talk about that, man, because it's it's the value of patience cannot be overstated. You know, if you go to the month of June, I mean, I was just fighting this thing every freaking day in the month of June. You know, I had shares, uh, I think from from down, I don't even know, like somewhere here. Um, I did take losses in May on this thing as well. You could see it went it went crazy high from a dollar up to over ten bucks on this pump before they finally killed it. But all in here, I was fighting with enormous size, paying ridiculous interest, uh, getting bought in here and here on these days, like just absolutely insane stubbornness. And I think it took me pretty much three blowups on the year to finally get in my head that like, if it's not going your way, you got to stop fighting it, man. And you will save yourself so much trouble in the long run and just really improve your risk reward ratio between GESI and HKD and ILAG. I mean, I lost almost a million dollars between those. Now GSI did end up making more than what I lost back on the backside, but if I had played it right on the front side, I could have made several hundred thousand more. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, an incredible feeling to finally be at the point where I've learned from all my mistakes and I'm operating um, on full capacity, if that makes sense. So uh, I would say just, just try to learn from my mistakes and avoid being stubborn on these things. It's so much better if you have a max stop in place and you cut quickly and you get back in if you need to or if, if you get back in a couple times and it doesn't work, you just you stop fighting for that day because Man, it's just, it's so much less stressful. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I feel like I rambled a little bit here at the end, but uh, very grateful for how far I've come and all the lessons that I've learned on these stocks. Um, you know, it just feels like I'm, I'm more prepared to take advantage of these opportunities when they come along, and I'm very grateful for that. So hopefully I can keep sharing those lessons with you guys. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, you know the drill. Let's grow better together. Bebé, dime por qué te mientes. ¿Por qué? No puedes esconder todo lo que tú por mí sientes.